because you have today lab and in the lab you are going to do both things you're going to do uh, even and odd signals and you're going to do uh, energy and power in this section we are going to calculate the energy and the power of a signal but we have to ask why we have to do that is it important of course it's important to know the power and the energy of any signal because when you uh, um, you got to know the capacity of any device you are going to use and when you use device sometimes you connect wire so the signal will be connected or, re or received by the device and sometimes use wireless but both are signals but maybe when you use wire and the signal in the wire like current or voltage thing like that it's like obvious for us because you can see it you can measure but the same thing if you have wireless like in the radio and the tv signal it, it, they are signal but when you want for example to turn on led you can see led you know led right led it's in in, in many devices even in here you see you find as an indicator then you got to know how much power how much energy some devices they are known by the uh, they can classify by the energy and some classify mm -hmm. by power but it's very obvious led has small power few powers maybe you can have one watt half watt two watt something like that so now we know that the cable or the signal is going to receive this is its power so it's important to know that. but if you want to have like uh different type of, of, of light like uh, this high intensity discharge lamps used, used in a stadium flood light that's what i'm talking about hundreds of watts it reached thousands of watts so it's important to know that the signal it requires more energy to be there so that's why it's important to know the signal how much energy can handle or how much power it can handle so the signal they are defined by it it's the strength of a signal is defined by its size and the size can be defined by the amplitude and the interval not only by one thing because you may have one high amplitude for short period for millisecond microsecond and maybe you are going to have another signal that has amplitude less than the let's say one has amplitude 10 and the the the, the period is one second another one has amplitude not 10 five but it's like for one hour which one is more powerful has more power so that's that's why it's important to know the power and the energy of a signal to calculate the power and the energy we did that before in circuit one so how can you find the power anybody can you tell me how can you find the power consumed by a, a resistance it's equal b square over r right if you choose r equal one ohm so you can say it's v squared even if you say i squared times r and shoot r1 it's i squared what, what what is that that's the power if you want to find the energy then you you multiply by time or you integrate with time so you got two things uh, i show here if you if you use r equal one so the the instantaneous power will be equal v squared there is difference between instantaneous power and average power so an instantaneous power will be v squared and the energy will be the integration of v squared if you want to find the power you must you divide the energy by time this is the definition of power it's energy divided by time and that's here the energy divided by time that's when you have there is an equation that's how they thought about it how they can calculate the signal and the energy in a simple way by using this concept so how you calculate the energy and the power the energy as we said before it's it was v square or i square and we said that was summar equal one so now we say i square v square but you might have any different variable different than current different than voltage so let's say whatever the signal take the signal and find the square value square this value and then integrate it you'll get the energy 
That's why you have x squared, the integration. That's the energy that we got from uh, integration of b squared just in this table. That's I mean, come from that. So that's the energy. What about the power divided by time? Divided by time. Then that's that would be the power. So that's how you calculate the energy and how you calculate the power. But in this, uh, in these two formula for energy and power, it's fi finite duration. If you want to calculate the energy and, and power in, during finite duration, like say from T1 to T2, from this time up to three seconds. But in general, for the whole value of the, of the time, so, and that's usually what we use, you make the integration from negative infinity to infinity not from T1 to T2. And when you divide it, you divide it uh, uh, over, uh, you make the integration from negative T to T from any time to time. And you may say this time from negative infinity to infinity also. The whole thing, and you get the power. I'm going to show you an example, an American example, how we calculate. But this is how they, they, they got the idea of calculating the energy and the power of the signal. Important remark, maybe somebody asked, why use the modulus? Not only you square it already, so if it's negative, it's going to be positive. Why are you making that? Why I'm not just to find the energy, I, I'm not just find the square and that's it. This is the energy. Why we use that? Models, why? First, we'll find the models of the signal and then you square. It. And then you integrate it, you get the energy. Why we do that? For a simple reason. Some cases, in some cases, the signal is a complex, and I'm going to review with you complex. Complex variable it has real and imaginary, and you can get it. You have to get its magnitude. Complex, you can you can look for complex as a vector, for example. It's not exact, but you can see it's a vector. It has a magnitude, has direction, has two parts. So it's important the magnitude looking for. That's why we put this to get the magnitude. Before I continue, what happens if the signal is not complex? You don't have to use this. You can just simplify it by using only x squared. You don't have the model if it's real. And in this lecture, I'm going to just focus on real signal, not complex. Signals can be classified as energy signals, power signals, or neither. These are the three types, nothing else. Question. Can a signal be power and energy signal at the same time? No. Signals are class classified as power signals, energy signals, neither. Second question, what does it mean power signal? What does it mean energy signal? The agree about this definition, we said that if you calculate the energy of a signal and you found you got definite number, it's an energy signal. What does it mean definite number? It means not infinity, something tangible you can measure. Say for example, the energy of the signal is 50 Joule. So you can call this one energy signal. Question two, what is the power of energy signal that has 50 Joule? If the signal is an energy signal, it cannot be power. See, the power will be zero. You cannot have signal, as I said, at the same time classified as energy and power signal. No, it's either energy signal or power signal. Energy signal, if the energy you calculate for the signal has a definite value, finite value, we call it energy signal. What about signal? Power signal. If you calculate the power, you find the its power has finite value, not infinity. Simple. So whatever has finite value, you can call it by the name energy or power. Depends on what in your calculation. Sometimes I said you can you, you can see that some signal is doesn't is not energy signal, neither uh, power signal. They found out most periodic almost all, most periodic signals are power signals. Keep in mind all this noise, because these things 
it comes in the exam, you have keep all this important point that I mentioned now. Okay. And there is a way to calculate the power for predictive uh, signal. Now let's just, uh, before I start solving the example, that's what I said, energy signal, signals have finite uh, signal energy. And in this case, E will have value, the energy will have value and the power will be zero. If you have a power signal, the power has finite value and the energy is infinite, okay? Now we would like to uh, get some example answer. All right, we have a signal and this signal <clears throat> constant equal four. We want to find the energy. And I'm going to give you the formula and I will let you try to do it first, see how can, what you are going to get. Okay. The energy uh, formula, it's equal to from negative infinity to infinity. I'm just giving you the formula. It's real, so let me just uh, uh, do it an easy way. So the energy of the signal X, we write EX because the signal is called X. The integration from negative infinity to infinity, x of t squared dt. And the power is defined as um, 1 over 2t, the integration negative infinity to positive infinity. That will be in this case, to make it simple in uh, math, we'll write from negative t to t, x square dt, limit, t goes to infinity. That's the definition of the energy and power. Remember, we have only three options. Energy signal, power signal, neither. So in this question, we want to know what is the type of the signal? Is it an energy signal? Is the power signal? Is it uh, uh, nothing? Either. So go ahead and start. I will give you three minutes. You can work together in this form. And you have the form. Yes. What is the big T stands for? T is dummy variable for the time, but I want to distinguish between the small T and the T. Just because at the end you make the limit from T and T, because you should have it. From negative infinity to infinity, you divide by infinity, but you can't do that mathematically. So you choose W variable and then you make the limit. Okay. So try first the uh, energy and then see if you failed in the energy, you you then you try the power. All right. The question is what's supposed to do first? If you don't know, first you, you should start to calculate the energy. That's, I mean, step number one. If you found the energy has a value, finite value, you call it energy signal. And you just write power is equal to you once the energy has value. If it doesn't have value, finite value, so you try the power formula. Okay, let me tell you about the step. Number one, you calculate the energy. There are two possibilities, let me just tell you. The first thing you do the energy. The energy has two possibilities. You might have a value or infinity. If it has a value, you will say, okay, power should is equal to zero, and this is energy signal. That's the first. What about if the energy is equal to infinity? It's not energy, but maybe it's power. So what you'll do, you calculate the power. Power has two choices. Power will have a value or infinity. If it has a value, so it is power signal, right? So we'll say it's power signal. What about this infinity? It's neither. So that's, I mean, how we go. If you follow this map, you will reach to the type of the signal. So you have here the form. So first start with the 
Anybody got the value of E? Uh, infinity, that's right. Why, why is infinity? Because simply when uh, if you do the energy, you will say the integration from negative infinity to infinity, and the value is equal four square dt. So the minus infinity to infinity, four times four is equal 16 dt. The integration of 16 will be 16 t, and then you substitute infinity and negative infinity. Infinity minus minus infinity will be infinity. So the energy is infinity. So we'll go for power. I'll give you one minute to do power, and anybody got the answer, you can tell. You got it? Yes. That's right. Uh, please uh, write to uh, check mark. Sixteen. Why I'm going to use the formula? One over. So power equal uh, the limit t infinity one over two t. The integration negative t to t. And the value four square dt. So I will have the limit t infinity one over two t, and uh, that's sixteen. And the integration of delta t is equal t, and I substitute t negative t. So I have limit t to infinity one over two t, and sixteen. And here t, one time I put t minus minus t, right? So I have limit t infinity, one over two t, I have 16, and t minus minus t will be equal to two t. Two t cancel with two t, so I, I want to find the limit for 16 when t go to infinity. 16 is constant, 16 what? So the power is equal to 16 what? So is it? A power or energy signal? A power signal, that's right. And the value of the power is 16 watt. And always when you have power signal, always you'll find its energy equal infinity. Why? Because we start from the beginning with infinity here. We start with E. And if you got it infinity, so possible it's power. Possible it's power. But if you have a power, yes, go ahead. Yes, yes. You know why? Because you are going to get this energy at the value, right? To be 15 or something. And divided by the time and t equal to, it goes to infinity. So number over infinity equals zero. Look at this equation. That's the equation. That's the equation of uh, power, right? When you look at this, what is that? Energy. So when you divide energy, if this is equal, constant so divided by 2t and t equals infinity, value over infinity equals zero. That's always the case. It's a good observation. Okay, the second problem here, we have this square. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be posted. It's important just to pay your attention. Everything will be posted. Complete solution, everything, and the video. Just I want everybody to think and participate. Because if you don't participate and think about it now and say, okay, when I go home, I'm going to do it, believe me. I tried that when I was still, didn't work. Wasting your time. So now we have a square, uh, we call it rectangle pulse uh, signal, and we need to find the, the, the energy and the power. We'll start always with energy. How you find the energy? Uh, the integration, negative infinity to infinity, x t squared. DT. I don't put the modulus because it's not complex, real. In this case, yes, you integrate from negative infinity to infinity, but you have from negative infinity up to negative two is equal zero, and it's zero, it'll be zero. So I will now reduce the integration limits, and instead of negative infinity to infinity, it will be from negative two to two, right? Okay, so I'll say from negative two up to two, and the value is equal five. So five is equal to equal to only five, DT. So I have 25t, the limit. 
So you have 25, t, 2 minus minus 2 will be 4, will be 100 joule. So what is the value of the energy? Okay, second question. What's the value of the power of the signal? Yeah. Great, that's right. What's the type of the signal? That's right. We have a periodic signal here. Is it periodic or not? Is this signal periodic? Give you half a minute. If it's periodic, tell me what's the period. The value of the period. Hmm? No. A. A, that's right. That's right. Because if you look at it's, it, this axis and this is the axis of the it's going to be repeat again, so that will eight be eight. All right, so it's periodic, and since it's periodic, the period is equal to we we'll make it t naught, so we we'll distinguish between uh, uh, both t's. So t naught will be equal to eight second. Usually, when you have a periodic signal, usually, most of the time, I said would be power of energy signal, power, yeah. So, I'll go ahead and calculate the power to make uh, the time efficient. Just I will, I will calculate the power because most of the time they are. How you calculate the power in normal situation, I will do that. That's what I used in previous example. The limit 1 over 2t from negative t to t, x t squared dt. That's the definition of power, power of a signal, any signal, a periodic, doesn't, it's not periodic. For periodic, this expression can be simplified more. If, if you like, let me give you the expression for the periodic. And all the formula is already is going to be uploaded. So for periodic signal, the power of a signal will be equal to one over T naught. What's T naught? The period of the period of that it's a second. The integration from over the period, whatever you choose, the integration over one period and x t squared dt. So that will be simple. When you have a periodic signal, use this one. Easy. Don't use the limit or anything like that. Use just one period. In our case, the period is equal eight. The integration over one period you choose. You, you may choose from zero to eight, or from two to ten, or from uh, negative two to six, whatever. But you make the integration over one period. Okay. The period over eight, I, I will choose from negative two uh, up to uh, six, but uh, here is zero. So I will be satisfied from negative two up to two, right? Because the rest will be zero. And the value of the function is five. Five squared will be equal to 25 dt. So I have one over eight and 25 t and t from negative two to two. So I have 25 over eight 
and 2 minus minus 2 will be 24, 25, I'm sorry, times 4 divided by 8, by 4 is 2, by 4 is 1, by 4 is 2, so you have uh, 12.5 watt. So that's expected periodic signal V power. So the power of the signal is equal to 12.5. Question, what is the value of the energy of this signal? No, infinity, infinity, E is equal to infinity. Power signal, its energy is infinity. Energy signal, its power is zero. Any question? What squared that 12.5 watt. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me I see what you mean. No. It's just uh, that's the by four is one, by four is two. This is the by four is one, by four is two. Okay. The same concept. Yes. So for these periodic uh, problems, will the integration always be basically whatever? One period. It'll be one, okay, whatever. One. Over one period, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'd like to take now discrete time signal. It's the same thing, the same thing. That's again, uh, you will have a checkpoint exercise when you when you study the strike solve. Yes. I did, but from negative from two to six is equal to zero. Look at the function itself. I did, but you, you have from negative two up to two and the integration from two to six, but this is zero. Yeah, good question. In uh, discrete time signal, all what we are going to do, we are going to replace the integration into what? If you have discrete, you don't integrate, you do what instead? Sum, yes, you do the sum, you are right. You add it. So now we'll look for the formula that we're going to use, focus on that. Uh, if you want to calculate the energy in general, not predicting anything like that, the same thing, uh, xn square, the amplitude, and the sum from n negative infinity to infinity, instead of integration, sum, that's all. And to get the power, average power, not the power, average power, you will do the same thing. You remember, we said one over two, let me just write. We did in the continuous one over two t, integration over uh, negative t to t means like, it's not a period, something any yani, interval of time, x of t square dt, and then you find the limit when t goes to infinity. The same thing in this case, but look at the difference. x n square, and instead of integration sum, Instead of minus t to t, minus n, because we'll use t, no, we use n. We use t small, we use n small. We use t capital, or uppercase of t, we use uppercase of n. Very similar. So from minus n to n, corresponding to minus t to t in, in, in this, uh, this equation. One over two t, what's one over two t? The total, from negative t to t, it's 2t. But in this create, we just explain, yes, from t, if you subtract here, t minus minus t, what you get? 2t, this is the 2t. You integrate over certain interval, you divide it by the length of this interval. In this create, what we explain, there's one at the zero is missing, right? 
So that's why when you make the sum from n minus minus n, you get 2n, you add what? 1. So that's why you get 1 over 2n plus 1. And then you find the limit when n goes to infinity. The same, the same. You don't have to memorize it, you have it, but I want to explain why they did the exception this way. If you have periodic, we do the same thing. In note, it's a period for a sum over one period, and that's it. Let's just take three examples of that. And I'll give you a chance to solve it because it's very similar, the same. So I want you to think about it before we go to the lab today. Okay. You have a signal, which is discrete time defined by this equation. And we want to determine if the sequence is power and energy. And if you sketch it, if I did that and I replaced n by t, you'll get decay exponential. So e power zero is equal one. And that's the way you are going to do the continuous. If this is e minus 0.5 t and zero for the this region. If you convert it from T to N, I'm just trying to tell you how can you sketch it. I will replace T by N, so I will, I will just remove T and I will use N and I'll write T N and I'll make sampling. Let me choose different color. So I, I'll make sample here. And so on. Not to make it continuous. So that's the way the discrete signal given will look like that. And it's required, and that's the definition of it. It's required to find is it power or energy. <clears throat> so what the first step we do. We we'll do the same steps, try to find the energy. Of course, if it was periodic, I'm not going to start with energy, start with power. But this is normal, I will start with energy. And of course, there are things that you can tell you it can be energy or power. If the signal is not increasing, it means that the energy is contained, the energy is limited and possible is interesting. But if something is shooting, so it's not going to be energy. Here, it's the decay. When it's decaying, it means that the energy is it's going to go to zero in the end. The value of uh, this equation is going to be zero at infinity. So it's, it's, not, it's, it's, like, it's not increasing enormously. No, just limited. So possibly it's energy. So we start with energy. Anyway, I'll give you a couple of minutes only to do the energy. If you want to, uh, the, I'm going to give you the formula. Uh, the formula for the energy of signal x is equal to the sum from n equal negative infinity to infinity x n squared. I'm not going to use the models because it's already clear. Go ahead. At least find the expression. If you if you got the expression, you simplify it. Show me the expression. See if it's right or wrong. Because you will stop at certain st uh, step. Just me. Let, let me simplify. Of course, this energy. Uh, to calculate it from n equal negative infinity to zero, but obviously it starts from zero. Before zero, it's zero. So you can see the sigma from n equal zero up to infinity. All right, now I, I simplify. X of n, what's X of n is given? X of n is given e power minus 0.5 n. And then find the square. How you find the square of something? You remember that? 
when you say e minus uh, let's say e minus uh, m squared what's the value of this one you can say it's equal e minus to m right or or i'm giving you a hint this is one way that's right that's what you learn but you can say it's the same is equal to e minus 2 power m you can do you can do that or that right both are equal right so there are many things why i'm saying that because of simple thing usually you are going to end with sum and when you do the sum how can you find the value of the sum i remember i had a math course and i remember the topic that we we, we used to implement that and i used not to like it a lot but it's important you find the sum using if it's uh, arithmetic or geometric series this is what we learned before so let's work with this and see what we get As we said that e power minus 0.5m, that will be square. I can write it minus 0.5 times 2 times n. I can make it like that. Do I agree about this or not first? We can do that, right? So minus half times 2, 1. So it's e minus 1, n. What's e power minus 1? It's a number. E to the power negative one and the, and the calculator e, the, exactly something like that. I want to get it exactly, so I make shift len. That's what I do in calculator. Uh, negative one. Oops. Uh, shift len. That's equal to point three six. Uh, Eight. So that's equal point three six eight. That's e power negative one. You see what I'm doing? I'm trying to get the all numbers inside, so I get number power variable. You try to do that. Point three six eight power n. You 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 might ask yourself, so what? You go back to the geometric series. I know you forgot it. And the formula said that the sum the sum of uh, a power n when n from zero up to infinity is equal to one over one minus a in a condition. The value of a, the absolute value is less than one fraction. Like what? Like for example, if a equal half. So when you say half power n, I want to sum this from n equal zero to infinity. n power zero is equal one. N equal one will be half. Half power two is equal quarter. One eighth, and you so on till you reach almost zero. So that's I mean when you sum it, but the condition is A is less than one. So you can say it's approximately equal to one over one minus half. One over half will be equal to, and you try to do the calculator. One plus half plus four plus one over eight, one over sixteen, one over thirty-two, and so on you'll find it's 1.9999. So that's approximation. But the condition that the amplitude of A should be less than one. That's it. That's I, that's my A. And this is N. This is exactly when you look at the energy signal now, using the sum, it's exactly like that one. The sum of A power N. So now my A is equal 0.368 from zero to infinity, zero to infinity. So. Now I can say that the energy is equal to 0 0.368 
No, it's one one over. That's my aim. Let me just fix it. That's my aim. So I will write try and write where one over one minus a and a is equal to 0.36a. And then you calculate this one will be around 1.582 joule. So that will be the energy of the signal. What is the value of the power? Zero. This is done has zero. Okay. But the other way around doesn't work. Okay. It's power. So that's how you can find. So discrete time signal, when you calculate the energy of the power, you are using sigma. And sigma has rules. And I know you forgot it, but you said, I, I, I already uh, I uploaded the folio, but uh, let's just let me show you if I have it here. No, I have it in the folio, the whole, the whole thing, the whole set of, uh, because it's not only the one rule, because you can, let's say that you want to find the sum of a series uh, over uh, uh, interval, not from zero to infinity, if you, want, if you want to find from zero to 10 or something like that, what you're supposed to do, all right? So that's the way you do find the energy and the power of a signal, discrete time signal. It means you're going to use some of integration. It means that you got to know uh, the formula for the sum. And actually, everyone needs something. Continuous time signal, it needs integration. And as I promised you, I'm not going to exhaust, exhaust you by integration. I'm going to put the formula for what we're going to use. The one that always cause trouble. You know what cause trouble? Exponential time sign. This thing, I will just bullet it. And I'm not going to use a lot of this. I'm not going, I'll never give you like sine squared on E power length. No, no, it's not a math class. I'll give you a simple thing. It depends on the signal. If the signal is exponential, if the signal is sinusoidal, I'm going to give you the integration of this signal. So continuous time signal needs skills of integration and discrete time signal needs skill for finding the sum of geometric series. And both I'm going to give you the format for each one. Do you have time to have another example? Or you are exhausted? Exhausted? Okay. But anyway, I, I don't mind because in, in we have left today uh, one hour, uh, two hours or two hours and a half. You'll be working today in energy and uh, the odd and even in this lab today. Of course, you know, the lab today will be calculation. So we'll be working a lot about it. Okay, go ahead, take a break. Yes.